By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we're going to look at a match between a red, white and black deck, a mid-range deck, and that's being played by Yoop. And uh, I am playing against Yoop and I'm playing with a budget blue deck. It's uh, kind of like blue aggro, you know, Lord of Atlantis, Surrender Perfreet, um, Unstable Mutations. It's quite nice and I really enjoy playing it because it's, it's always close. Even if you play against a power deck, it's always a close battle and it's completely budget friendly. So I'm actually going to show that to you in the deck deck. Now, before I jump to that section of the video, I would just like to point out that if you want to skip the introduction or the deck deck section or, you know, whatever, the best way to do this is by checking the description below because there you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG games. Click on there and that will take you straight to the action, to the actual games. Um, and also you can find more information about the rule set in the description below. So in other words, check the description if you have any questions or of course, leave a comment under this video. So now it's time to continue with the deck tags and we're going to start with the deck of my opponent, Yoop. Let's take a look at his mid-range brew. And here we see the deck of my opponent, Yoop. And actually it's not the deck photo, right? It's just a couple of cards. Unfortunately, I don't have a deck photo, but I do have a pretty good idea of what his deck is about and what he wants to do. It's um, primarily white and red with a little bit of a black splash. And the reason for that is Setch Troll. So maybe that's a good place to start. There's a full playset of Setch Trolls in this deck. Like Setch Troll is a really good card, right? One red, one, uh, one red and two, two for a 2-2 two, two creature that gets plus one, plus one if you have a Swamp. So it becomes a 3-3 three, three for three, which is really good value in old school. And on top of that, you can also regenerate it for one black. So obviously... Uh, Yoop is playing with Badlands in this deck and maybe one or two basic swamps. I'm not quite sure. We'll just have to see um, during the game. But yeah, I know he's playing with the Set Trolls, a full playset, also a full playset of Savannah Lions. So when you combine those two, it means he can play pretty aggressively, right? They're pretty cheap creatures for a lot of power. So he's going to try to uh, put some pressure on the board. And he's also playing with some Sarah Angels. I'm not quite sure how many. I think maybe two or three. Again, that's something that maybe will be clarified during the match. Um, and then I've just highlighted a few of his main spells. He's playing with a full playset of Disenchants, Swords, and Lightning Bolts. One of the things I think is always very good at the combination white and red is that you have access to and the Lightning Bolt and the um, Swords to Plowshares to deal with creature threats. That means you can use your Lightning Bolts, for example, a Hypnotic Spectre, or in my case, a Lord of Atlantis. And you can use your Swords to Plowshares later in the game for kind of the bigger, beefier creatures, like a Surrender Perfreet that I'm playing with. Another nice thing about it is, if you already have your Swords to Plowshares early game and you're using that as removal, then later on in the game, you can use your Lightning Bolts to kind of use it as direct damage to finish your opponent off. So the, the, the Lightning Bolt is, of course, such a versatile card, which makes it really, really strong. And then when we're looking at the mana base, one of the things that he's done to kind of make sure that he always has access to black mana is uh, play with Felwer Stone, so he can kind of play his black spells. He's probably also playing with, like, Demonic Tutor. Um, but, of course, that's a bit of a problem against my deck because I'm playing Mono Blue. So usually Felwer Stone is a really good mana fixer, right? It's, it's an ideal substitute for Moxin, like a cheap substitute, or it's an ideal card if you play Moxin, but your your deck relies so heavily on different types of mana, then Felwerstone can really help you out to fix your mana. The reason I'm saying this is because a lot of people in old school magic play with City of Brass. So when your opponent has a City of Brass and you have a Felwerstone, you can actually make any color of mana with the Felwerstone. So that makes the Felwerstone very, very powerful. And I think that's one of the reasons why it's so popular in old school. And there's only two to play and you can tap it instantly for a mana as well. So basically it's only one to uh, to cast, right? Because you can use your Felwer Stone straight away. Of course, the problem with the Felwer Stone is if your opponent is, for example, playing a mono color deck like me, you know, you only have one color mana. It's just not as good as when your opponent plays multiple colors. Now, he's also playing with a full playset of Mishra's Factories. They're kind of creatures as well, right? So it kind of adds up to that aggressive nature of this deck with, you know, Mishra's Factory, Savannah Line, Setral. It's a very aggressive package there together with the Lightning Bolt. So I think this deck can go quite quickly for a mid-range deck. 
but it also has a really good mid-range mid plan. I believe there are also some Jam Day Tomes in here. So this is what I can tell you about the deck of my opponent, Joop. Now let's take a look at my deck, the Budget Blue List. And here we see my deck. So I'm playing my Budget Blue deck. Now this is really one of my favorite decks uh, to play because it's very easy to make, like cheap to make. And it can really win against a lot of very powerful decks. I've had pretty good results at tournaments. And um, yeah, it's just a fun deck to play. I think the most expensive card in this deck is the foreign wide bordered Surrender Befreeds, but they can be easily replaced by the revised version and they're way more affordable. And obviously, unfortunately, all prices are going up and up and up. So, it, you know, when you talk about budget, it's very relative, especially when you're talking about budget in old school. But I think for an old school deck, this is like a really good budget option. Now, when we're looking at this deck, uh, people also call these type of decks suicide blue decks, right? This is definitely an aggro blue deck. And the reason they're called suicide is because you usually want to play your unstable mutation really early on a creature, ideally a flying man. So you've got a 4-4 flyer to attack with. And of course, your unstable mutation is slowly going to eat away at your own flying man. You're also playing with Surrender Befreed. Surrender Befreed's deal damage to you, of course. During the upkeep, you're also playing with a full playset of Psyblast. Now, Psyblast also deal two damage to you when casting. So it's really kind of an all or nothing deck. Now, what I always find interesting is when you're ahead of the game, let's say in turn two, let's say turn one, you've got Flying Man. Turn two, you play, I don't know, a Merfolk of the Pearl Trident and an Unstable Mutation. Then um, in turn three, you can actually choose to kind of stop playing out anything, keep two blue open to use your counter spell or maybe even your boomerang, right? So there are some subtle changes. It's not only put your foot on the gas pedal and go. There are like moments when you're playing with your mono blue deck where you can decide, okay, am I gonna keep my counter spell because I'm ahead on the game right now and I wanna protect what I have and I wanna make sure that my opponent is unable to make like a big move? Or is this the moment to push through and to give extra gas? And the answer to the question is, it depends on the type of deck your opponent is playing. It depends on the other cards in your hand. You know, it depends if it's the first game or an after sideboard game. So there are a lot of like factors coming in. And it's really important to kind of know the meta, um, you know, of, of where you're playing in to make a good decision. In a lot of cases, because your plan is aggro, it's a good decision to keep your, your foot on the gas. But I can tell from experience that's not always the way to go. Now, I also have a little sideboard here, but this is actually a match without sideboarding. We're also playing a best of five. I think I haven't mentioned that yet, but this is a best of five match. And we're actually, we didn't sideboard at all. We're just kind of testing out the base 60 cards of our deck. So you do see a sideboard here on the picture. I think when it com comes to the sideboard, there is a lot for me to improve in. So if you have any suggestions on how to make my sideboard better, please leave a comment down below. It's very much appreciated. Okay, so this is my deck. We've seen the deck, well, some of the cards of the deck uh, that my opponent has. So now let's go to the match. Game number one of a best of five match. On the left, we see Yoop playing with this white, red, and black a mid-range deck. Look at him go here. He's put a card on the bottom, by the way, taking a mulligan. And on the right, it's me with my budget blue deck. Just starting with one Mistress Factory and passing turn. So no creature for me here. No Murfolk of the Pearl Trident or Flying Man. There's the attack by Yoop. So taking three damage, dropping to 17. Here we see a Murfolk of the Pearl Trident, but I'm already under some serious pressure. The interesting thing here is that my opponent is not finding any colors. You know, he's playing with uh, another power stone that's not really going to give him the colors he needs. He's playing with three different colors and he's not finding any of them. So that's kind of harsh, but he does have those uh, Mishra's factories that he can attack me with. So I'm already on 13, playing my Surrender Befreet now. And uh, I guess this is at least a good blocker for the next turn. So it's probably going to stop Yoop from uh, attacking me. I'm attacking with the Merfolk of the Pearl Trident here, dealing my first point of damage. I got to laugh a little because I, I'm the one who's supposed to play aggro here. And uh, there's uh, finally some uh, mana. There's the planes into a Savannah Alliance and the pass turn. Taking a damage from my own Surrendip. And there is another Merfolk. And of course, I'm attacking here with the Surrendip. That's what you got to do when you've got a Surrendip. Just attack. Got two blue open for a possible counter spell here. And I wonder if Yoop is going to attack now with one of the factories and pump it up with the other. That way, he could potentially trade it for my Mishra's factory. And yep, he's going to animate. I think that's a good decision. 
So, oh, there's a side blast on my part, taking care of that Mishra's factory. But of course, I'm taking two damage. Again, going to drop to 10. There we see a gem day tome. So I'm going to untap, going to go to nine. And of course, I can attack again, dealing three more points of damage. I'm kind of expecting to do that. I wonder if I also want to attack with a Merfolk. Exactly, attack with one Merfolk. Ooh, he's trading. I didn't expect this, to be honest. That is interesting. He's trading. Maybe he's got a balance in hand. That would be kind of devastating for me. So it looks like he's tapping to draw a card. He's on 13. I'm on 9. And he's passing turn here. So I'm going to go to 8. It's looking really good for me now. The tables have really changed. I can attack again with my Surrender. He has no answer for it. And he's taking just a lot of damage. Also attacking with the Merfolk here. So I guess, yeah, I've got another Psy Blast. And uh, that means more damage here for my opponent. So he's going to drop to 9. Of course, I'm also dropping because at Psy Blast, they do hurt 2 damage every time I play one. So I'm now on 6. And he's tapping 5. Okay, there we see a Sarah Angel, but a counter spell on my side. And there we see a Scrub Land for that Black Mana. And there we see an attack and a side blast. That's it. It can go really, really fast, right? I, I drew a lot of side blasts. Those were three side blasts in one game. So here you can see kind of how explosive my deck can be. So even though I had a slow start, I was able to kind of quickly take over. So this is just the first game. It's a best of five. So let's quickly go to game number two. Game number two. Here we go. So it's one game up for me. There we see you starting with the plateau. I'm starting with an island into a flying man, so it's a pretty good start for me. And there's a Badlands and a pass. I'm playing a Mishra's Factory, not my second blue. So I guess I don't have a counter spell in hand or not a second blue in hand, of course. That could be the option too. There we see a Satch Troll. So it's a 3-3 because of those two Badlands. That's really good. So now I've got a small opening, I guess, to play a Psy Blast on it because he doesn't have a black mana open for regeneration. We don't see a Psy Blast. We see a Surrender Afrit instead. So a 3-4 Flyer. Absolute powerhouse. There's another Satch Troll, but I've got four in the air with flying that he cannot block. So it's looking pretty good uh, for me. And oh, there's a Control Magic taking over one of the Satch Trolls. Now remember, it's just a 2 2 on my side of the table. There's a Disenchant though, so he's taking it back and he's attacking with the Satch and using a strip line here on one of the two factories. So he's doing something back, but I can still attack with my Flyers. I'm on 15 now. I can attack for 4 again. Ooh, I'm attacking. That's interesting. Okay, playing a boomerang and then attacking. Okay, so now I'm dealing 6 points of damage. He's going to drop to 8. And I'm passing turn. So I really like the boomerang here. You know, it opened up those 2 extra points of damage. And it's slowing down my opponent as well. Because if he now, if, is he now going to recast the set troll? He's actually not... And I'm attacking again. There we see a bolt on the flying man taking three damage from the surrender. Another surrender. Oh boy. It's looking very dire here for my opponent. He needs the swords to take care of one of the two flyers. And he's very low on mana, by the way. So there's a sword of plowshares. That's good news for him. So I'm dropping here now to 13 after taking damage from my own surrender. And my opponent's on five. Can I finish it off already? If I've got a Psy Blast, I can win the game here. Attacking first, so he's going to drop to two. And okay, there's a Brain Geyser. So I can play a Brain Geyser for two. And then I'm actually going to use probably the Strip Mine here. Exactly, going to use the Strip Mine, I think, on the Plateau. Because I want to make sure he doesn't have any white mana. Because he needs his white mana to possibly cast the Swords to Plowshares to kill my Surrendip. So I need to keep my Surrendip alive to actually win the game. So there we see a factory, and yep, that's it. That's another one. So I've won this one. It's 0-2 for me, but remember, it is a best of five. And um, I said earlier in the introduction that we played without sideboards. That's not true. We're now going to board in our sideboards after the first two games. So 0-2 for me. We're going to go into our sideboards, and we'll catch back up with you in game number three. Game number three. Here we go. So if I can win this one, then it's an 0-3, and this best of five is dominated by my blue deck so i'm rooting a little bit for you here which sounds strange but i mean so he's got a good start by the way with the savannah alliance putting me on 18 and there's a felwer stone so perhaps next turn he's going to cast uh, a set troll there we see another blue so i can counter at least there's another attack so already down to 16 he's not playing anything 
there is a surrender upon my part and there is a quick sorts to plowshares. Does mean some life for me. So I'm now back up on 19. Now I'm on 17 after that attack by the Savannah Lions. He's got enough land to play a Sarah Angel. Oh, Wheel of Fortune. That's quite interesting. And there we see some sideboard cards, of course. Blue Elemental Blast and Red Elemental Blast. That makes sense. So now we've got seven new cards. Wow, look at my hand. Only lands and a Psy Blast. Ugh. That is really bad. I must say the hand of my opponent, Jupe, is looking a lot, lot better. So I guess next turn, I've got to try to block a Savannah Alliance. Oh, that's not even going to happen there. Strip mine on my factory. And remember, my hand is full of lands and a Psy Blast. This is a huge problem for me. Completely flooded with that Wheel of Fortune. I'm on 13. And of course, he's having a field day here. I don't want to use my Psy Blast because it's the only weapon I have. On the other hand, I need to start using it sooner or later to buy me some extra time here. Wow. So now he's going to attack and I'm going to use my Psy Blast. Oh, to make matters worse, Red Elemental Blast. Oh, that's just horrible. I'm dropping to seven. Oh, this is horrible. Uh, okay, no, I'm playing a boomerang. Okay, at least I can do something. I, I believe he already played out of land. There's a double bolt. It's over anyway. Okay, <laughs> I was stretching. I think the game really got decided uh, with that Wheel of Fortune when I just only drew lands in the side blast. Anyway, I'm happy because this means we're going to game number four. Game number four, here we go. And that's a pretty good start for me again. Flying Man turn one. There, oh, look at this opener by Yoop. City in a bottle from the sideboard. <laughs> oh no, oh, I didn't think about that card at all. Remember, I play with uh, Surrender Befreed. I cannot play that out anymore. I play with Unstable Mutation. I cannot play that out anymore. I play with Flying Man. I cannot play that out anymore. Like this card is single-handedly ruining my entire deck. Does this mean that Yoop will get back to a 2-2 score? And after this, I definitely need to look uh, at my cards again and do some sideboarding and make some changes. There's a Brain Geyser for two. Maybe I got to board into two Timmy's in the sideboard. I got to board out some Arabian Nights for sure. Wow, this is going to be super difficult. So, playing a Mishra's Factory here as well. And I'm going to drop to 18. Oh man, this is bad. This is bad. Okay, at least I can still play out my Lord of Atlantis and my Merfolk of the Pearl Trident. So that's something. And of course, because of that phantasmal terrain that came in from the sideboard, I'm giving my opponent some islands so I can make my Merfolk unblockable. So that's something. There's a counter spell on the set troll. There is another island. And I'm playing an unstable mutation, but I can't because there's a city in a bottle. This is not possible. So we're doing a play right now that's actually not possible because Unstable Mutation is from the Arabian Nights expansion. So you should go up in life here. Shouldn't take the full five damage. I hope that we're gonna realize that. Oh yeah, I think, I think now we're realizing it, <laughs> exactly. When we got the Unstable on the trigger, we're like, wait a minute, doesn't work like that. So he's taking back the damage. That would have meant I wouldn't have attacked with my Lord, because I don't want to trade my Lord for the Lion. So, Yoop is back on 20. The Unstable's back in my hand. There we see a Red Elemental Blast, countering the Red Elemental Blast, trying to keep my uh, my Lord alive here. I mean, basically my Lord's, and oh man, okay, again countering it, and there's a Red Blast. Now it's finally dead after three attempts. And oh, there's a Disenchant. I mean, he's got all the answers. It's looking very, very grim for me here on 14. I mean, that city in a bottle is just uh, such a problem. Playing a control magic now on the Lions. I mean, I'd rather, you know, play it on a Sarah Angel instead, but you've got to do what you've got to do. I'm already too low on life here on 11. And this is very frustrating. Three cards in hand, probably some Arabian Nights cards in there. One of them is an unstable mutation. Probably got a Serendip in there or whatever. Playing another a Lord of Atlantis here. So at least it's going to hold my opponent back a little bit. And if he animates... Oh, he's counting his mana. Does he have a fireball? Oh, <laughs> fireball. End of the road. Oh, man. A city in a bottle is such a killer. So I'm going to go back to my sideboard plan. I'm going to try 
to I mean I was ahead two games. Am I actually gonna lose this after sideboarding? I guess we'll see in game number five. Game number five, the decision. And it looks like my uh, opponent here, Yupa, has taken a mulligan. Starting with the Flying Man. He's starting with the Savannah Lions. Now, remember, I've lost every game after sideboarding. I really don't want to see... Okay, there's a boomerang. A little bit of a tempo play here. I really don't want to see another city in a bottle. That is my worst nightmare. So, I'm on 18 now. So, we play the Plateau. I'm playing a Mistress Factory. Gonna deal a point of damage. Again, a boomerang. Ooh, Red Elemental Blast. So he's countering my boomerang. And another attack. I'm dropping to 16. He's playing a Mistress Factory. That's very relevant. And am I gonna attack here? I mean, it's still a summoning sickness. So I think I should, actually. Interesting. I'm using it to animate it. I'm a little bit surprised about this. There's a bolt. I guess it's a goner. What am I going to do here? Do I have another boomerang, perhaps? Playing a counter spell. And so he's taking the damage. Going to go down to 15. I wonder if he's going to attack me, actually, here. Going to put me on 14 if he wants to. He's a little bit in the tank, which is understandable. And he's just passing turn, not attacking. And I'm animating attacking with both. I don't mind... Uh, Trading here. That's exactly what's happening. So we're trading the factories. I'm dealing a damage. He's going to drop to 14. And look at his lands. He's very low on lands. Okay, I guess now he's kind of back with three lands playing a set troll. And of course, he's lower on lands because of that uh, boomerang earlier. Oh, playing control magic. If he doesn't have a disenchant, there's a jam day tomes. He's going to try to find answers. Yeah, I'm just going to attack. I'm just going to go full on. Going to attack with everything. He's going to block the factory here. He's going to take three points of damage. He's going to drop to 10, playing another Flying Man. Okay, that's actually pretty okay, because he can block the set troll. That's what he does. So he's going to trade. He's going to take two more damage. He's going to go down to eight. And I'm really going full aggro here, especially because of that Jam Day Tome. Because he's got card advantage, so I just need to win it because I'm more aggressive here. So he's going to go to six, play Merfolk of the Pearl Trident pass turn. Can I win this one? There is a Mishra's Factory and a pass. Going to deal two points of damage. Another Merfolk of the Pearl Trident. There is another dual land. So he's finding a lot of lands now. But what he needs is just a creature. Does he have a Fireball? Because he's counting his mana. And then the question is, do I have a Red Elemental Blast? Sorry, a Blue Elemental Blast or a Counter Spell? And he's going to give it a try. There's a huge fireball. There is a counter spell with that one fireball. He could have killed all my creatures. And that's it. I got it. Okay. Yes. Man, for a moment there, I thought I was going to lose it after those sideboarding games. Because I went all the way back to, uh, to a 2-2 from an 0-2 up to a 2-2. But at least I've won this one. And man, if that fireball would have succeeded... Probably Yoop would have taken the game with the Jam Day Tome on the board because he could have wiped out my entire board with that one fireball. What a great finish of this best of five match, man. Thank you, Yoop, for playing these games with me. And also thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you enjoy more games of the budget blue deck, please take a look in the comments below because I've pinned a little message with a link to some more uh, budget blue action if you liked my mono blue deck. Oh man, and um, if you want to help the channel out, by the way, there are three things that you can do that I would really appreciate. The first thing is liking this video, so hit that thumbs up button. The second thing is leaving a comment to let me know what you thought about this match. And the third thing is you can share this on your social, share it with your friends and help the channel grow. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm happy to see that you found Timmy Talks. Please consider subscribing and hit that bell. Thank you very much. And then there's one last thing that you can do, and that is you can become a patron of the show and you can become a sponsor of Timmy Talks. And it's pretty simple. You see a card appearing uh, right now. And if you click on that info card, it'll take you to the Timmy Talks Patreon page. And there you can find all the information. Talking about all that, let's go to the end scroll and take a look at our fantastic, wunderbar, amazing channel members and patrons. Here we go.
Ticketus, Ficketus, Somba, Kazik. 